Okay, so you won't comment on it, Mr. Court. Attorney General, but you had no problem dispatching Matthew Colangelo. Who's yes. Matthew Colangelo? Yes, that is false. I Finally. did not dispatch Matthew Colangelo. Was Jack Smith nominated by President Biden or confirmed by the U.S. Senate? You're asking me about a case. Again, motions filed. This is a simple another. question. The case that you're talking about is now under advisement in the Supreme Court of the United States, and I'm not going to comment any court matter, which the court made. I didn't ask you to do that. I asked you to do, ask you how you're reinforcing it. That's what your spokesman said. Why don't you do that in public so the public can see what you're doing? Well, I'm not saying that we shouldn't also do it in public. Well, I, think I hope should. everybody in this room would want to know. Merrick Garland, the Attorney General of the United States, had a pretty rough day in Congress today, getting slapped around by a bunch of Republicans in an onslaught. We got Matt Gates coming in hot with a bunch of questions and then follow-up questions to some very pertinent items that would like some more information on. In particular, how was the DOJ communicating with the rest of the Trump prosecutors scattered around the rest of the country, engaged in their own lawfare attacks against Trump. Nadler, who's been in Congress for decades now, says that there are threats of violence coming when Republicans ask the hard questions, but Thomas Massey and Dan Bishop will also bring the ruckus to Merrick Garland, and so we'll listen to see what they said in the highlights from today's testimony. But the big one that's catching a lot of attention is from Matt Gates. Fiery as usual, he posted this. He says that Garland is calling this a dangerous conspiracy. Yes, everything is a dangerous conspiracy. Everything is so harmful and undermining democracy and blah, 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 all the things when it's oppositional to your intended goals. Here's Matt Gates versus Merrick Garland in Congress. Attorney General, you've told us that it's a dangerous conspiracy theory to allege that the Department of Justice is communicating with these state and local prosecutions against Trump. You can clear it all up for us right now. Will the Department of Justice provide to the committee Just all give documents, us the all correspondence, between the department and Alvin Bragg's office and Fonnie Willis's office and Letitia James's office. The offices you're referring to are independent offices of state. I get of, that. I get that. State. The question is whether or not you will provide all of your documents and correspondence. That's the question. Yours. It's, I don't need a, a history lesson. Well, I'm going to say again, we do not control those offices. They make yeah, their the own The question is whether decisions. you communicate with them, not whether you control them. Do you communicate with them and will you provide those communications? You make a request. We'll refer it to our office of legislative But see, here's the thing. They you come in here and you lodge this attack that it's a conspiracy theory that there is coordinated lawfare against Trump. And then when we say, fine, just give us the documents, give us the correspondence, and then if it's a conspiracy theory, that will be evident. But when you say, well, we'll take your request, and then we'll sort of work it through the DOJ's accommodation process, then you're actually advancing the very dangerous conspiracy theory that you're concerned about. Now, you yeah, were a judge to bed. Just once give us nominated materials. the highest court in our country. SCOTUS. When you were a judge, I'm just curious, did you ever make political donations to partisan candidates? Like Judge Mercon did? No. no. And you didn't because that would create the potential appearance of impropriety. I didn't you? because there's a federal rule oh. barring federal judges from making contributions. Right, but under that same theory of there's a rational basis on the judicial for that process, law, right? like, shouldn't someone be owed like a jury of their peers and a judge that's non-biased rather than getting a judge from your political opponent's donor file? I'm well aware that you're not asking a hypothetical. You're asking me to comment on a verdict, jury verdict in a Another jurisdiction which has to be respected. I won't comment on it. That case is still ongoing. The defendant Mr. Attorney indicated. General, I hadn't asked you about the verdict yet. We were getting there. I was talking about the judge. And so let me ask you this question about your time as a judge. Was there ever a time when you were a judge when you had a family member who was personally profiting off of the notoriety of a case that, that was before your court? Look, I'm going to say again, very clear, you're asking me to comment on a case no. in another no. jurisdiction. No, no. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Attorney General. Did you ever have a family member profit off of the notoriety of any case? that you sat over. Say again, you're asking, yes or no. me, you're asking me to comment on a case currently. Well, it seems you're connecting the dots, court. Mr. Attorney General. Yeah. I'm just asking you as to Never a general principle. At all. But you are aware that Judge Mershon's daughter was profiting off of this prosecution. You are aware million that dollars. that creates the appearance Still of impropriety. You Still know, the very reason there's a federal rule against judges giving donations is because it is the very attack on the judicial process that we're concerned about. I'm sorry, I don't agree with anything you just said, but I'm not going to comment on a, okay, so you won't comment on it, Mr. Court. Attorney General, but you had no problem dispatching Matthew Colangelo. Who's yes. Matthew Colangelo? Yes, that is false. I Finally. did not dispatch Matthew Colangelo. Matthew That's Colangelo false. became the Assistant Attorney General at the very beginning of the Biden administration without having been Senate confirmed, goes and gets the senior role at the DOJ, and then after, I believe it's Gupta, replaces Colangelo, Colangelo makes this remarkable downstream career journey from the U.S. Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., and then pops up in Alvin 
Robin Bragg's office to go get Trump. And you're saying that's just a career choice that was made that has nothing to do with the lawfare coordinated I'm by saying the it's- Yeah, and let's back up there just a little bit more there, Matt. Well done on that, by the way. Amazing. But before that, Matthew Colangelo was also with Tish in Letitia James's office, prosecuting Trump all over the place. And before that, he was with Obama. Ah, working for Eric Holder in that DOJ. So he goes from Obama's DOJ to New York's AG, then back to Biden's DOJ and number three over there. Then he goes back to a small little assistant prosecutor position in Manhattan DA's office. He's gone through four different locations and probably all four times prosecuted Trump. Probably was the guy behind a lot of the initial deviate the planning with Obama, right? When Trump got framed essentially after he won in 2016. So the list goes on and on and on and Garland is just telling us, oh no, he just went and got a new job because he's very interested in justice in New York. False. I did not dispatch Mr. Colangelo anywhere. Well, do you know how he ended up there? I assume he spoke, applied for a job there yeah, and got indeed. the job. Yeah, on Indeed. Yeah, he see, went to like you LinkedIn. Know what, you know what? I had nothing to do with it. Well, you might not That's have had anything like to do with position? it, but we've got this contemporaneous evidence in Mr. Pomerantz's book. So Pomerantz writes this book, which I'm sure you're aware of, where he says, we put together the legal eagles to get Trump. We got all these folks together and we assembled them for that purpose. And so when we on the Judiciary Committee think about attacks on the judicial process, our concern is that the facts and the law aren't being followed. A target is acquired here at Trump, and then you assemble the legal talent yes. from DOJ, Mr. Pomerantz, and you bring everybody in to get him. I, I really, and meanwhile, the judge is making money on it. The judge's family is making money on it for stuff that you yourself wouldn't do. You know, no one's going to buy this. No one's going to believe it. It's going to create great disruption. And I am saddened by it because like you, I have given my life to the law. Yeah. I care deeply about the law. Yes. And I think Terrible. that the lawfare we've seen against President it, Trump will it. do great Sad damage well beyond our time in public service. I see my time's expiring. Well done. I totally agree with that. It's a shame to watch our entire system come crumbling down because of the left. And they're the ones who are doing it. They're so upset with Trump that they don't even recognize what they're doing. They just are willing to break everything because they hate the man so much. Not even recognizing what they're doing to themselves. It's like you realize you're like chewing your own arm off right now. You understand that? They don't care. They brought out Nadler. Let's listen to him for just a second before we move on. We'll listen to the full Massey clip and then we'll hear from Dan Bishop. But here is Nadler laying up a softball. He's seated up on his multiple layers diapers. That's just why he's got a little booster seat there. But Garland is asked about the danger of Trump saying that the FBI was going to go and take him out because they did have a use of force policy that was written in there that authorized them to use some level of force. And we know that in other FBI raids around the country, people die regularly. Happens all the time. Not even a thing. They just, well, whatever, another guy, we shot another dude. They're like, oh, perfect, another good day for us. So Garland then says that that is dangerous to even think about it. Mr. Attorney General, throughout the 118th Congress, Republicans have made bogus allegations claiming that the Justice Department has been weaponized. Most recently, there was an allegation that the FBI was authorized to, quote, kill the former president. What impact does this type of rhetoric have on the career prosecutors and law enforcement agents like at a the spelling Department bee of Justice? Question, right? This is dangerous. It raises the threats of violence against prosecutors and career agents. The allegation is false. As the FBI has explained, the document that's being discussed is our standard use of force protocol, which is in a non-standard case where you have another entity called the Secret Service defending and protecting the president on what I would argue is his sovereign property as an outgoing president. Limitation on the use of force, and which is routinely part of the package for search warrants. And routinely people die in search warrant raids. And was part of the package for the search of President Biden. Biden's home as well. So when former President Trump... Did they raid him? Did they send in armed agents in plain clothes to raid Joe Biden? Did they take photographs Hunter's bedroom like they did with Barron's? I don't think so, Mayor. So we'd like to see a lot more about that raid, so-called, of the president's. All those photographs and all the evidence logs, because you say it's the same. Alleges that this was an assassination attempt against him. He is not telling the truth, either knowingly or, as is often the case with him, unknowingly. I'm just saying that the allegation is not true. This is our standard use of force policy. Yeah, it's standard. So they could have shot and eliminated a threat. That's their use of force policy. Got it. Thanks for confirming that for us, Mayor. All right, Thomas Massey was also out. In our prior segment, we listened to a little snippet of him lacing in on the appointment of Jack Smith. But I think the full segment here is worthwhile. So let's tune in and see what Massey says. I want to start by reading you the appointment clause of the Constitution. Article 2, Section 2, Clause 6 states, the president shall nominate and by and with the advice and consent of the Senate shall appoint ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls, judges.
judges of the Supreme Court and all other officers of the United States whose appointments are not herein otherwise provided for and which shall be established by law. Are U.S. attorneys nominated by the president and confirmed by the Senate according to this appointments clause? They are appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate. Wouldn't you agree that U.S. attorneys are held to the appointments clause because they are delegated some part of the sovereign power of the United States, such as the ability to make indictments and charge individuals with crimes? I would say that those are not the reasons why, and a court has already ruled on the question uh -oh. of whether special counsels agitated. are subject to the appointments clause in the Mueller case and ruled that they were not. Was Jack Smith nominated by President Biden or confirmed by the U.S. Senate? You're asking me about a case. Again, motions filed. This is a simple another. question. No, I'm not was gonna... Jack Smith nominated by President Biden? No, he was not. Was he confirmed by the Senate? No, he was not. When was the special counsel statute passed? There is no special counsel statute. There was an so, independent counsel statute that was expired. So it expired. So what gives you the authority to appoint a special counsel? You've created an office in the U.S. government that does not exist without authorization from Congress. There are regulations under which the Attorney General appoints special counsel. They've been in effect the Reno uh, for regs. 30 years, maybe longer, under parties of, under both parties. The matter that you're talking about, about whether somebody can have an employee of the Justice Department serve as special counsel has been adjudicated. You, let me interrupt for a second, because you appealed to a regulation, a rule, whereas the Constitution says, yeah. shall be established by law. Yeah, yeah. And there's a, the, the statutes. Right, the statute, but the you statutes. referred to a regulation, not to U.S. Code. May I this answer the regulation I, cites the two U.S. Code provisions that permit the Attorney General's appointment. Attorney General Barr cited to the same ones. Are you familiar? Even Attorney General are, Meese did okay. that. All right, are you familiar with former Attorney General Meese's amicus? No. You're not? I know that he's filed one because I read it in the newspapers, but otherwise I'm not familiar with it. Well, he raises some good questions that I agree with in there. It seems like you've created an office that would require an act of Congress, yet there's not an act of Congress that authorizes that. And even if it didn't require an act of Congress, and you've already admitted it, there was no act of Congress that established this office, it would still require, according to the Constitution, a nomination by the president and confirmation by the Senate. Yeah, I want to move on can't override to January 6th. Is it accurate to say that the DOJ is on pace to arrest roughly one protester a day in 2024, nearly three years after the incident? I don't know what the pace is. His job is to arrest and bring to justice people who are criminally responsible, and as they are found, they will be arrested. Is your office preparing to drop charges against more than 340 January 6thers charged with 1512C2 and release dozens from prison on that count if the Supreme Court this month reverses how your department has used that statute against court, them? We respect the Supreme Court. Whatever the court rules, we will act appropriately. So you'll have to drop the charges if the Supreme Court says that you, you did that wrongfully. I'm not answer hypotheticals. We'll wait and see what the Supreme Court says. What do you say in response to D.C. Appellate Court overturning two excessive sentencing requests sought by your office? I say the United States system of justice working. Yeah. If people think that why they have you charging, inappropriate why sentences, you they can people? appeal their sentences. That's the way our system works. And we respect think the maybe you're overcharging so all of them? you've refused to answer questions before us, including my questions about January 6th on multiple occasions here in this committee, but the Inspector General is preparing a report. Are you in receipt of that report yet? He's promised to examine the role and activity of DOJ and its components in preparing for and responding to the events at the U.S. Capitol. And instigating and you have, are you it. in receipt of that? I'm not in receipt yeah. of any report. You'll have to ask the Inspector Dropping General. pipe bombs Isn't off. Isn't it true that it will go to you before it's released for review? I don't know about the... It will not go to me for review. The Inspector General is independent. I hope to see it before, but that's up to the Inspector General. Let me just remind you, do, I was not we, the Attorney General yeah. on January 6th. Do we have your commitment to release that as soon as you see it? No. The determination of the release of Inspector General reports is up to the Inspector General. We give them independence. Congress so you, demands okay. that we give them independence. My time is expired. But so we have your commitment not to slow down that the release of that from the inspector general. Our inspector general is a very independent person. All right. So that's Merrick. Good job on Massey digging into those issues. And we've covered that at length here. The Ed Meese illegal appointment of Jack Smith. Merrick Garland's relying on those old Reno regulations, which were cobbled together from a bunch of
and various U.S. codes to give them this power to appoint special counsel feels like it's not the law. Hopefully the Supreme Court or another court weighs in on that soon enough. It might be Judge Cannon. So we'll finish up the onslaught against Garland with Dan Bishop asking Garland about what's happening with the social media companies as we move into 2024. He says, no, 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 no. We're not putting pressure on social media companies. Not this year. For Attorney General, you have resurrected the Foreign Influence Task Force. A FBI spokesman recently told media, according to reports, that FBI has returned to facilitating the sharing of information about foreign malign influence with social media companies in a way that reinforces that private companies are free to decide on their own whether and how to take action on that information. A district court has decided that you didn't do that before. How are you doing that? How are you reinforcing that private companies have their own capacity to decide? The case that you're talking about is now under advisement in the Supreme Court of the United States, and I'm not going to comment any court matter, which the court may... I didn't ask you to do that. I asked you to do, ask you how you're reinforcing it. That's what your spokesman said. You're reinforcing the private company's latitude. How are you I'm doing that? I'm not going to comment on what the district court said. We have the authority, as the Supreme Court just held last week, to persuade we can't coerce. So we can provide information that Russia or China or Iran oh. or North Korea <laughs> is operating on a social media platform. Why don't you do it in public? And leave it to the social Russia. media to take it down. Why don't you do hope... it in public? I'm sorry? Why don't you do that in public so the public can see what you're doing? Well, I'm not saying that we shouldn't also do it in public. Well, I, I think hope should. everybody in this room would want to know if one of our adversaries is acting as if they were American citizens on a social uh, media. Back. What a joke. Give me a break. You mean like the last time you protected us from Russia, 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 and you made up a bunch of fake nonsense to try to dog President Trump throughout his entire first term? Don't you want to know? Yeah, you mean like we want to know from our CIA when they just make up fake lies and 51 of them sign a propaganda letter to try to rig an election and are succeeding it evidently yeah and then the federal government is not going to coerce anybody they're only going to persuade them you know with the entire power of the federal apparatus down on their neck so that's garland and he is squirming a bit in there it was enjoyable to watch whether that's going to change anything at the doj of course we know the answer to that is no he's not going to change anything they are operating on raw power but we got some good statements on that one out of him from massey from gates from bishop and garland telling us that they're not going to coerce anything in 2024. We don't believe that for a minute. We know that they have done this in the prior election. They're going to do it again. So we're going to be here continuing to cover it, my friends. Thanks for subscribing and liking this video wherever it is you're watching it. It really helps you to promote this and send this out to more people. If you missed our first segment, which was about Hunter Biden and his trial, make sure you go and check that one out. We'll cue that one up right here for you so you can watch that one next. We'll look forward to seeing you over there.